I am so pleased and honored to welcome their daughters to the show, Cheryl, Lowry, and Elizabeth Omalami, who continue to carry on their father's legacies. Ladies, I thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes, indeed. I know that um, this is a conversation I have been looking forward to having because I want to hear how these two girls who watched their fathers do so many amazing things and went on to carry on their legacies. But it started, right, as little girls watching their fathers do these bold, brave, and very courageous things. As girls, what was that like for you? Well, it was normal. Yeah. It was a normal way of life. Um, I don't think I understood that there was something different really about mm. my father until show and tell and I thought everybody's daddy went to jail until I started yeah. talking about what I did that weekend. Um, and so it's been an, uh, an incredible journey um, having him as a pastor, um, a friend, um, a mentor, uh, a boss yeah. sometimes um, has, has been a lot but it's been an incredible journey. And Elizabeth. For um, it's good that she said that because uh, my father was all those things to me mm -hmm. and I got snatched away from my mom who gave up uh, raising me like a lady and I was in blue jeans and t-shirts I uh, went to jail marching when I was nine years old in Savannah Georgia mm -hmm. so you can imagine we thought it was normal we thought I thought well I'm in jail out here eating bologna sandwiches at nine years old, watching crosses burned in my yard at mm. five. Everybody must be doing this. But then you find out later on how much of a crucible you were in, mm. of pressure, of uh, unusual lifestyle, of everybody uh, living in your house when you got home. Everybody coming to town <laughs> yeah. and visiting you and know, staying at the house. Yeah, you find out that you lived in a crucible of pressure and pride and uh, success that very few people actually experienced. Tell me uh, how cognizant were your fathers of this pressure that you as, as children were dealing with and how did they handle it? Do you think he knew the pressure that you? No, they didn't have time no, to be they thinking didn't think about, about that. that. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, get in and roll or stay home. Mm. It, it wasn't like, oh, little girl, come on, you just. We're doing the work of the people, no. yeah. and you are doing it too. Yeah. Was, and, and yet I was challenged. I mean, I won't, you, absolutely, I'm sure we were challenged um, as his youngest child. Um, at some point, I was the last person at the dinner table, mm. and so I had to step up my current events game. Oh. Um, and so, heaven forbid, there was an editorial that he might have written or otherwise that I didn't catch on the way home from school, right? But during those conversations, um, it was important to him that, you know, you read the local news, not just the national news, mm -hmm. Hmm. that you um, read local papers, not just the national papers, and you be informed. Mm -hmm. And so at that dinner table, sometimes I would try and pontificate my way through a topic. <laughs> uh, can you imagine trying to pontificate no, through a topic with him? No, not and with I just wouldn't have had a good week unless he said to me, Cheryl, do you have you no intellectual oh curiosity? Gosh. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's him. I just yes. heard him yes. when you said it. Absolutely. If, if, if I hadn't been asked if I hadn't didn't have cur uh, intellectual curiosity in a week, I hadn't had a good week. Wow. So there was yeah. a standard, uh, which I think um, is so important to me at the Lowry Institute, that students who are in our capstone projects understand their research you have to know what you're talking about mm -hmm. before you jump out there. Um, our fathers could speak on any topic uh, as soon as you ask, but mm -hmm. that's not because um, they didn't know what they were talking about. It was because the, he was well read. My father Very was well, well read. He, had, he knew what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. He had already uh, formed an opinion before asked. And I think that's so important for students to understand um, that you need to do research and, and understand where you're coming from. And mm -hmm. both of your fathers were so well educated. I mean, mm -hmm. we're talking about a chemist. We're talking right. about, I mean, <laughs> these were, uh, these, uh, the movement was their ministry, but there was so much more to the work. And I, I think yeah. about, well, oh, go that's ahead. How uh, my father fed us right. was because he was a chemist. He was right. the first black chemist to be hired by the United States Department of Agriculture because Dr. King didn't have money to pay all those staff members he needed to organize the entire South and also many places in the North mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. well. So that chemistry degree fed our families. And the question for us was, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. What are you doing with your life? Actress? Oh, I don't think so. You know, you want to be an actress. 
So I had to fight through what I wanted to be, just like many of the women in the civil rights movement did. Coretta mm. wanted to be a, co a concert singer. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother wanted to be, the, she was the head librarian at Savannah State. You forgot what you wanted and you gave everything to the movement. And I'm still doing that at Hosea Health, mm -hmm. feeding 51,000 people a year, still watching my peers on TV saying, wow, I could be in that show. But you know, I mm. wouldn't give it up for nothing. I right. wouldn't change anything. <laughs> I wouldn't change it. <laughs> and we're so glad because the work you're doing, and I know it's the same with you, speaking of change, yes. this concept of developing change agents, teaching this generation what your father taught so many people through SCLC, through uh, policy change, through voting registration. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and I'm dealing with a generation um, that I'm, I'm, I'm humbled and honored to deal with in a mm -hmm. generation, that um, when they were four and five years old, Barack Obama became the president. Right. Mm -hmm. And so their reality, their perspective on this world is quite different the than ours. Frame of reference is completely, it's completely different. different. Mm -hmm. My first not remember acknowledgement of a president was JFK being shot. Mm -hmm. um, and so their standard of their understanding, their patience level is at a different level because of their perspective. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we're still, while they see a black president, they're also also having to tell people and explain that black lives really do matter. Mm -hmm. And so this generation has to be dealt with in a different way. Uh, my dad used to say, I, God gave you, want me to do my impression? Yes, you have yeah. to, you have okay. to. I need God to gave you two ears and one mouth so you listen twice as much as you talk. <laughs> <laughs> he said that to me once. I actually, yeah. yes. And and so absolutely, they ha we have to learn to listen to them, to understand what's relevant to them. Our, mm. our, our ways of grassroots organizing and those things are still relevant to them, but they have to apply to TikTok and other mm. things and other areas that are relevant to and them. That, so and that's the challenge. That's the challenge. Because how do you share the passion of the civil rights movement and say, you have to give up your life, you have to be selfless, you have mm. to forget what you want for the community. We got black men that can't even sleep in their, go to sleep in their car mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. being shot. Mm -hmm. uh, we, 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 we leave, uh, they leave our homes and we the mothers are crying. Praying they don't know if their home. sons are coming home. So how do you tell this generation, they got money now, they got enterprise, they're very smart, mm -hmm. but you have a responsibility and that's what our fathers pressed into us. You can't live your own life. You have a responsibility to mm. the community, to black people. We're going to keep talking about that responsibility when we return after this break. Good, good points. Good points. We'll be right back. Stay with us.